Coconuts TV. This is the pangolin. Often likened to an artichoke on legs, this little-known animal holds the odd distinction of being the only mammal covered in scales. Unfortunately, this uniqueness may be its undoing. Pangolin is also the most illegally trafficked animal on Earth, thanks to an insatiable demand for its scales and meat. It's considered such a delicacy in China and Vietnam that the trafficking of this scaly anteater surpasses that of even rhinos and elephants. Experts say that if the trafficking of pangolins is not slowed dramatically or halted, this rare creature could become extinct before most people know it even existed. If the pangolin survives, it will likely be thanks to a small but passionate band of conservationists. These individuals have dedicated their lives to a Herculean task, saving a species that few know or care about from total extinction. Kukfong National Park is one of the treasures of Vietnam and home to Save Vietnam's Wildlife, a nonprofit on the front lines of pangolin conservation. We visited Save Vietnam's Wildlife as they were preparing to release 35 critically endangered Sunda pangolins who had been rescued from poachers back into the wild. This is actually the biggest release we've ever done as an organization. We are uh, unique in Vietnam in terms of being able to successfully rehabilitate and release this species. Even on a, a global platform, there are not many places that can successfully keep pangolins in captivity. One of the most passionate protectors of the pangolin is Thai, who is the program's director. Because the pangolin are nocturnal, so that's why we need to use the red light. It's, a, it's a good for their eyes. So here we have a, one of the animal. His name is Lucky. Yeah, Lucky been here for a very long time, almost nine years. The baby is 16 days old. Is it a he or a she, the baby? A uh, he's, yeah, a boy. The baby pangolin was named Miracle because the center was so amazed its pregnant mother survived the animal trade. Right now we don't have much information about pangolin in the wild, so we really want to understand more about the pangolin. What we do know is that pangolin scales are made of keratin, the same substance as human fingernails. Pangolins have no teeth, long, sticky tongues, and dine on ants and termites. When threatened, the pangolin rolls up into a ball that's impenetrable to every species on Earth, except humans. For the next 48 hours, the pangolins would be on a marathon drive down almost the entire length of Vietnam. Their destination, Cat Tian National Park, where the animals would be released in two days. This is Ho Chi Minh City, the powerhouse of the Vietnamese economy. Ho Chi Minh is a bustling metropolis and a key point along the route of the pangolin trade. Even though the pangolin trade is illegal, there's little actual enforcement in Vietnam. And lots of traditional medicine sellers still carry the animal. Ty and I visited a street lined with traditional medicine shops to investigate whether they were selling pangolin scales. We used a hidden camera to avoid suspicion. This is cooked pangolin scale. So what, what does this do? Many Vietnamese and Chinese still swear by pangolin scales as a panacea that cures everything from cancer to eczema. The acceptance of this belief is so widespread that some of Vietnam's hospitals use pangolin scales to treat illnesses. And until 2014, that treatment was even covered by government health insurance. 
These are from the tail, he says. The back ones are much bigger. So these are all the little bones that are in the pangolin tail. It quickly became clear that despite their illegal status, pangolin scales are not hard to find in Vietnam. It, uh, yeah, 50 grams. Uh, this is 50 grams of cooked pangolin scale. It's worth about $22. It looks kind of like a pork rind. It's hard, but if you press on it a little bit, it'll crack, kind of like you crack a nail. As though selling pangolin scales isn't bad enough, we also heard rumors of local restaurants with special wildlife menus that serve pangolin. Pangolin meat is considered a luxury item in Vietnam and China, where it's sold for hundreds of dollars per kilogram. We traveled to a restaurant known for its wildlife menu, and Pangolin was on it. And grilled weasel. You can get grilled weasel here. And snake. Lizards. Is this pangolin? Is that what it is? Yeah, that's the penguin. Yeah, that's that? tete. Tete in the North Vietnam. North Vietnam people okay. often say tete. In the South Vietnam people say chus. Is it alive right now? Mm-hmm. Yes, still alive. Can we see? The smallest pangolin they have is two kilograms, which means it would be 13 million dong. And I believe that's about $600 total. They said that if we wanted a pangolin, they could have one here in about 15 minutes. And the way they offered to serve it to us is that they would bring it alive to the table. They'll slit its throat so we can see the blood, and then they could steam it whole, or they could stir fry it, which sounds absolutely horrifying. After spending time around the cute pangolins, the idea of someone ordering one for dinner was heartbreaking and the high price tag seemed prohibitive. But there's an insatiable appetite for the pangolin. This delicacy is marketed as food, wine, medicine, and even jewelry. A report last year by the Pangolin Specialist Group found that the pangolin is literally being eaten out of existence. Katian National Park is a lush forest about three hours south of Ho Chi Minh. With the river surrounding the park, there's an extra barrier against poachers who may want to prey on its plentiful wildlife. So the pangolins just traveled over 35 hours all the way from Hanoi to Katian National Park where we are now. And now they're stuck on this boat. It turns out that the bus can't clear this little ramp here, and so now these guys are all trying to figure out how they're going to get the pangolins off the bus. The only way to do it was a lot of elbow grease. The guys unloaded the pangolin boxes one by one. But before the pangolins could go free that night, there was one more obstacle. Torrential rain. Inconvenience aside, the rain did give me a chance to ask Heidi a question I'd been pondering. Do you ever worry that you're just releasing them to be potentially caught again? Absolutely we worry about that. The team has worked for years to establish a release site that is safe, particularly comparative to other wild spaces here in Vietnam. So um, we are quite confident that This is giving these animals the best opportunity back in the wild that we can possibly give them. When pangolins are captured by poachers, they go through a truly traumatic experience. The pangolins are tightly balled in netted sacks, unable to move, with no access to food or water. Poachers will often pump their stomachs full of foreign liquids, like cornstarch, to make the animals heavier since they're sold by weight. Many pangolins are unable to survive, and that's why Save Vietnam's wildlife's effort to rescue them is so important. Around 10 p.m., we decided we couldn't wait any longer, so despite the rain, the team began journeying into the jungle.
Our expedition started after nightfall and took us deep into the dark, wet, muddy jungle as we released each pangolin. Hi, pangolin. You're gonna climb me? One of them even took a liking to me. Oh my God, she's sniffing me out. Even though these wild animals were being set free, many of them seemed cautious about leaving the boxes they had called home for the past two days. But others bolted out of their boxes, happy to get back to the jungle. Oh my God, look at him climb. Seeing that last pangolin go into the woods and climb all those trees like crazy and be so happy made all of this worth it, even though I feel totally gross. It was after midnight when we freed the last pangolin, and it dawned on me that part of why this creature is so unknown is that it's very hard for humans to see. Pangolins are nocturnal and notoriously hard to keep in zoos. To encounter one, you pretty much have to wander into the Vietnamese jungle after dark. In addition to freeing the pangolins, our expedition would also serve as scientific research. Of the 35 pangolins we released, three of them had transmitters attached to their backs. Ty hoped that tracking the pangolins would help them collect much-needed information about this enigmatic species. The next morning, we met up with Ty and a local park ranger to track them down. Soon enough, we were hiking deep into the jungle again, searching for the pangolins. To find them, we used a tracking device that picks up transmitter signals. I just hear fuzz. Oh, yeah. oh I hear that. Yeah. We're tracking the pangolins right now, and we think one might be up this tree because the transmitter signal seems to be somewhere around here. We see here the signal come out from the pangolin, and so it's, a, it's possible for pangolins stay inside the tree hollow, but climb very high. So normally we get the signal much higher if we put the, the sound is up. Normally when we go in the daytime, you never can see the pangolin. Our job is only find the location where they possible they are and then set up the camera trap there. And hopefully the camera trap can like the take photograph of the animal when they're coming out. We're picking up the signal for the third pangolin. We followed it pretty deep into the jungle now. After several hours of searching, we finally found the transmitter, but it was bittersweet. <sighs> we found our transmitter, but no pangolin. It had been less than 24 hours, and one of the pangolins had already lost its transmitter. Our experience reinforced why people know so little about this creature. No wonder hardly anyone outside of the region is aware of its existence, despite the fact that it's the Earth's most trafficked animal. If the current rate of trading continues, the pangolin seems doomed to end up extinct, another casualty of humanity's indifference and ignorance. As we witnessed, it's a notoriously hard animal to study. The pangolin is nocturnal. Its home is the dense but rapidly shrinking jungles of Southeast Asia. In captivity, pangolins rarely thrive, let alone breed. And to top it off, their only real value in the human world is their flesh and scales. But if a century from now the species still walks this earth, it will owe a debt to conservationists like Tai and Heidi. Unless Vietnam's government takes a more active role in conservation, these guardians really may be the last line of defense against the total extinction of the pangolin.